Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do something slightly different than we do in our usual daily videos and we're going to have a look at the latest on the polar vortex. Of course it's something that we extensively had a look at through the winter look ahead and I thought it's been a good few weeks since we've had a look at what is going on high up in the atmosphere and it'll be a great opportunity to update it just before Christmas because things could get pretty interesting with the polar vortex and the stratosphere over the course of the next few weeks, perhaps the next couple of months in general as well. Now, of course, just wanted to say through our winter look ads, we did think that there was a real possibility that the polar vortex could be pretty weak through December and could even uh, see a sudden stratospheric warming around December and January. And encouragingly, that's actually what we're potentially seeing. Now, I've got the latest GFS up here. Uh, we'll run through that. We'll have a look at the latest from the ECMWF, both looking at the anomalies um, over the North Pole in both sort of a, a graph form and in a sort of an image, an, an image form as well. Uh, and you'll be able to see there is a real possibility of seeing a really quite weak polar vortex over the course of the next few weeks, which could aid in colder weather continuing to develop over the course of the next few weeks. Of course, it's actually looking pretty cold in the lead up to Christmas. Um, and again, that's because the tropospheric polar vortex, which of course is linked to the stratospheric polar vortex, is heading towards Northern Europe. And of course, as we head into January, if we continue to see weakening of the stratospheric polar vortex, it could allow more blocking patterns towards the surface to prevail uh, and have higher chance of, of developing. So if you start on the latest GFS, you can see over the course of the next few days, uh, and the next week in general, we do see a relatively strong polar vortex. I wouldn't say it's anything remarkable, but it's relatively cold and strong. And you can see how it kind of aligns with what we're seeing uh, next week at the surface with the, the polar vortex generally on our side of the pole. And you can see actually at the stratosphere actually descends right over the top of the UK. Again, this is way up in the atmosphere, so we'll actually have no effect on us and how, you know, how purple these colours are. But it, of course, does link to the tropospheric polar vortex, which does head over the top of us. Again, uh, again, these two things are linked. And you could say this is partially why we, we, we could be seeing that uh, sort of low but very cold air heading our way. But interestingly, if you see over the days leading up towards Christmas, this, uh, this latest GFS has the stratospheric polar vortex losing a lot of its intensity. It gets quite elongated here around the 21st, 22nd. And you see those darker pinks and purples towards the centre of the polar vortex start to disappear, which is not what you'd expect for the middle of December. Of course, the middle of December is getting towards its peak strength. Here, it's actually reducing its strength. So we're seeing a weakening in the polar vortex and it's becoming more and more elongated. And then through the Christmas period, we actually see a significant warming starting over the Alps and really stretching the polar vortex here. Again, we're not seeing a sudden stratospheric warming, but we're definitely seeing a significant weakening in the zonal mean winds high up in the atmosphere. And again, that could allow blocking patterns towards the surface to develop more as this would propagate through the atmosphere, this weakening in the zonal flow, weakening the jet stream, allowing more amplification and more disturbances to what we would usually expect. But of course, this is one GFS run. We need to see agreements to say this with any certainty. Now, if we have a look at the latest ECMWF, again, you can see the these are the anomalies. These are not the absolute temperatures. So, of course, this is going to be slightly different uh, as, you'd, uh, as, of course, the darker red say doesn't mean it's very warm. It just means it's a much higher than average. So you can see here, darker reds are actually already starting to penetrate into the Arctic. So significantly higher than average temperatures are already pushing into the Arctic. And you see where the darker blues are coming. It's coming to our side of the pole. And again, that was contributing to what we're seeing next week with that tropospheric polar vortex heading towards Scandinavia and Northern Europe in general. As we progress to the week between Christmas and New Year, look at that, a major area of darker red straight over the North Pole. Again, correlating well with the GFS, which has a significantly weaker than average polar vortex. This continues all the way into early January and yeah, right to the end of this, 15th to the 22nd, of course the anomalies are weaker because it's further out, but still 
reds are parked straight over the North Pole. This doesn't necessarily mean there will be a sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, of course, these are anomalies, so this is you know, showing that it's going to be much warmer than average, but it doesn't necessarily mean a reversal in the zonal mean winds. But, you know, that is something we could look at nearer the time. But this eastern Earth nuclear anomaly chart definitely does suggest that the polar vortex is going to be under some strain over the next few weeks, and it's going to be intentionally be a lot warmer than normal and a lot weaker as a consequence of that. Now, we could see the weakness in the zonal mean winds at 10 HPA by having a look at this in a line format, in a line graph format. So you can see at the moment, it's slightly weaker than average. A thicker red line is the average. And you can see it's pretty much getting to peak strength in the next week or so uh, climatolo climatologically. But you can see we're actually slightly weaker than average and it's losing its intensity. And we actually are seeing a lot of the runs going down to only 10 to 15 meters per second, which is an incredibly weak polar vortex for the time of year. And you can see perhaps even as much as a quarter of runs are going for a sudden stratospheric warming into the new year. Most, as I said, around the sort of first to second or third week of January. So not imminent, uh, I must stress that, at least three, four weeks away um, from most of these ensembles. So again, in the time frame of real uncertainty. But in the whole ensemble spread, I'd say 90% are weaker than average for the next month to perhaps month and a half. So regardless of whether we see some stratospheric warming or not, it is looking pretty likely here that the zonal mean winds high up in the atmosphere are going to be a lot weaker than average. Um, and as I said, that will propagate through the atmosphere, weaken the westerly momentum, and perhaps allow more blocking patterns and more amplification and more just raviness of the jet stream in general uh, instead of a flat westerly which can happen when we see a very strong polar vortex again it's one piece of the puzzle and again a weak polar vortex doesn't mean colder weather it just is perhaps an enhancer of colder weather patterns if they do start to emerge so it is incredibly interesting seeing this i'm kind of pleased to actually see this because it does mean that what we said through our winter look aheads did have it has come to fruition we were correct about this that we were going to be seeing a weaker than average and again uh, you know props to the models which throughout the middle of the autumn in their extended ranges were suggesting perhaps a weakening through december and that is what we are seeing so it's pretty uh, good performance from the models and again we can take that into next year um but for the time being, it's going to be incredibly interesting to see what happens over the course of the next few weeks in general. As I said, not only do we have cold weather coming up next week, this sort of very weak polar vortex could aid strengthening colder patterns over the coming weeks and month in general. And it does mean that the next month to six weeks could be incredibly interesting indeed. But as ever, for surface level conditions, uh, we can look at all of the sort of high level weather patterns, high level climate drivers as much as we want. But in the end, it all comes down to the day to day models that we look at. And if they show cold weather over the course of the next week, few weeks, then we can see where it sort of trace back to. But if it doesn't, then, you know, the polar vortex, uh, of course, being weak does aid, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see colder weather. So we would just have to keep an eye, as I said, over the course of the next few weeks. But at the moment, uh, perhaps if you are looking forward to some wintry weather over the next few weeks, maybe even a white Christmas, things are looking pretty encouraging indeed. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Of course, if you're interested in what's going on over the next week or two, then make sure you check out the video from yesterday, of course, or the video coming out tomorrow, which again, we'll be having a look at the lead up to Christmas. And hopefully in tomorrow's video, we'll have a much clearer look as it has been pretty uncertain over the last few days. Consistently has increased, but it has continued to look relatively uncertain. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have a much greater certainty of what is going to be happening. And we'll be able to see uh, and say what those chances of potentially a white Christmas could be. As I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.